Did you know that without APIs, your favorite apps wouldn't exist? Yep, no more social media, no more online games, and definitely no more Mr. Beast videos. And get this, over 83% of all web traffic is driven by APIs. That's like saying almost everything you do online, whether it's checking Instagram, ordering pizza, or streaming your favorite shows, is powered by APIs working their magic behind the scenes. Today, we're diving into the magical world of APIs, which stands for Application Programming Interface. Not as cool as it sounds, but super important. We'll break down REST, HadeOS. Sounds like a spell from Harry Potter, right? GraphQL, RPC, gRPC, WebSocket, and webhooks. Don't worry, even though these names sound like they belong in a very boring sci-fi movie, we're going to make them as easy to understand as explaining your favorite game to a friend. Stick around to the end, because if you don't, you'll miss out on knowing the coolest ways apps chat behind your back. Before we dive into the wild API jungle, let's figure out what an API actually is. Picture this. You're at a restaurant because who doesn't love thinking about food? The menu is the API. It shows you what you can order. The waiter? That's the API interface. They take your order to the kitchen and bring back your food. And the kitchen? That's the app doing all the hard work, cooking up your delicious meal. So basically, an API is a super fancy digital waiter that never asks for tips. In geek speak, an API is a bunch of rules and protocols that let different software apps talk and work together. It tells the apps how to ask for stuff and how to share info, making sure everything runs smoothly. APIs help apps work together, automate boring tasks, and create cool new features. They're like the middleman that lets developers use special tricks without needing to know all the nerdy details, making the whole process way easier. Now that you're probably starving from all that food talk and you've got a basic understanding of APIs, let's jump into the nuts and bolts of it. First up, we have the resource style, the Brad Pitt of API architectures. Everyone knows it and it's ridiculously popular. We're talking about REST or representational state transfer. Imagine Twitter where every tweet has its own unique data. Want to fetch a tweet? Just yell slash tweets at your computer. Disclaimer, please don't actually yell at your computer. It has feelings too. Developers love rest like cats, love knocking things off tables. It's just irresistible. It's scalable, cacheable, and more flexible than a yoga instructor. Twitter's API, sorry, Elon, I forgot. X's API uses rest, handling millions of users tweeting about their lunch or their cat's latest shenanigans. It's like a digital buffet where you can grab whatever data you want, whenever you want it. Plus, it's got catching down to a science. This means that if you've already fetched some data, the server doesn't have to dig it up again. It can just serve it from the cache, speeding things up like a well-oiled machine. And let's not forget about flexibility. REST APIs can serve data in various formats like JSON, XML, and HTML, making it a versatile choice for developers. But wait, REST isn't all rainbows and unicorns. Sometimes you might get more data than you bargained for. It's like ordering a small salad and getting the entire produce section delivered to your door. And if you want related data, prepare for an API marathon that'll leave you more winded than trying to explain blockchain to your grandma. Now that you're well rested and before we get too comfy with rest, let's jump into the next exciting part. Next up is Hatios, which sounds like a sneeze, but stands for hypermedia as the engine of application state. That was a mouthful of words. It's like having a GPS for your API, always telling you where to go next, even when you didn't ask. PayPal uses this, so when you make a payment, it doesn't just say done and leave you hanging. It's more like, hey, want to cancel that? Check the status, send more money. Here are all the cool things you can do next. It's the API equivalent of those choose your own adventure books, minus the risk of being eaten by a Gru. This dynamic navigation is a game changer. It allows clients to discover actions based on the current state of the application, making it easier to interact without having to hard code URLs. However, just like any adventure, there are challenges. This style can lead to what we call chatty APIs. Imagine having to ask your guide a million questions just to find your way around. 
Clients may need to make multiple requests to navigate through resources, which can slow things down. Additionally, implementing HateOS can be more complex than standard REST, which might feel like trying to solve a Rubik's Cube blindfolded. So HateOS might have you feeling like you're solving a Rubik's Cube blindfolded, but let's shift gears. Enter GraphQL, the Marie Kondo of APIs. It lets you specify exactly what data you need, no more, no less. It's like going to a build your own pizza place, but for data, GitHub uses this for their API v4, so you can ask for just the username and avatar URL without getting their entire life story. GraphQL's precise data fetching is a major advantage, minimizing data transfer and allowing for a single endpoint for all requests. It's like having a magic menu where you can customize your order to perfection. GitHub's API leverages this capability to allow developers to fetch complex data structures in one go which would otherwise require multiple calls in a traditional REST API. However, there's a catch. Crafting queries can become complex, especially for beginners. It's like trying to assemble a piece of IKEA furniture without the instructions. Frustrating. Plus, standard HTTP caching mechanisms are less effective with GraphQL due to its dynamic nature, which can make it a little tricky to manage. No. So after you've Marie kondo ed your data with GraphQL, let's continue our journey and explore the tunnel style, represented by RPC or remote procedure call. RPC is like having a really smart friend who does your homework for you. You just ask and voila, it's done. It allows clients to execute procedures on a server as if they were local calls. A modern implementation of RPC is gRPC which is widely used by companies like Netflix for efficient communication between microservices. gRPC is faster than a caffeinated cheetah and more efficient than a German train schedule. Additionally, it provides strong typing, which creates clear contracts between client and server. But setting it up, that's about as easy as teaching a cat to bark. It's not directly usable in web browsers without additional tools, which can feel like trying to fit a square peg in a round hole. After trying to teach your cat to bark with gRPC, let's shift gears and talk about the event-driven style, which focuses on asynchronous communication. WebSocket is the chatterbox of API styles. It's like having a phone line constantly open between your app and the server. WhatsApp Web uses this to make sure you never miss a message, even if it's just your mom sending you the 100th cat video of the day. It's great for real-time updates, but maintaining all those connections can strain server resources like trying to juggle while riding a unicycle on a tightrope over a pit of hungry alligators. After juggling those hungry alligators with WebSocket, let's move on to our final star, webhooks. Webhooks involve user-defined HTTP callbacks that notify applications about specific events. Think of it as having a personal assistant who taps you on the shoulder whenever something important happens. Stripe uses this to let merchants know about payments. It's like having a friend who always tells you when there's free food in the office. Incredibly useful. However, webhooks also come with their own set of challenges. If the receiving service is down, notifications may be missed, leading to reliability issues. Imagine your assistant going on vacation and leaving you in the dark. But let's be real. Which coder do you know that has their own assistant? Additionally, Exposing endpoints to external services can create security risks, so it's crucial to implement proper safeguards. All right, folks, we've journeyed through the wild world of APIs from REST, the flexible yoga instructor, to HattieOS, the sneezing GPS, through GraphQL's Marie Kondo magic, RPC's homework helper, WebSocket's chatty tightrope act, and finally, to Webhooks, your personal assistant. Each style has its perks and quirks making our digital lives smoother and more connected. Remember, choosing the right API style is like picking the perfect dance move. It depends on the song, the crowd, and how many energy drinks you've had. Here's a final laugh for you. Before you marry a person, you should first make them use a computer with slow internet service to see who they really are.